Our next guest is a Grammy-winning musician and a founding member of The Roots, whom you can see every night on The Tonight Show. His fantastic documentary, Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised, is in theaters and on Hulu now. Let's take a look. It was the ultimate black barbecue. And then you start to hear music and someone speaking, and you knew it was something bigger. Please welcome back to the show our friend Questlove. Hi. How you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Great to see you. Great to see you. Great to see you. No, hold your applause, everyone. <laughs> hold your applause. Oh. oh, yeah. You guys are spoiled. You got an audience and everything downstairs. You know what, though? I, I you know, I've, I've been a longtime fan of this show. Um, this was like the last thing uh, in the last normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want to call it. This is the last thing I did before I realized how serious the next 16 months was going to be. But... Um, I, I gotta say, I, lo I love the rhythm. I, I like, this feels like public access. I, I like <laughs> thank it. Thank you. Well, oh my God, thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, I hope our, our NBC paymasters are watching yes. and hearing that this is a public access show. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, so I love is, the rhythm of it. Thank you, all. thank you. We, uh, we do love it too. Um, so this is uh, a wonderful film about the 1969 Harlem Cultural Festival. This is not something I knew about. Right. And Me neither. That's the shocking thing, right? Like, you have all this knowledge of, uh, especially uh, music history, and when you first got word of this, you also didn't think it was real. I thought I had all the knowledge in the world, you know, because, you know, I, I was, there was a period where, like, I was the guy, I was YouTube. I was the guy that everyone called on for any sort of archive. So, um, naturally, when I, you know, when they requested a meeting with me, you know, I Googled and I called a few music experts and, None of them ever heard of this thing. So I was very, very, they hate when I say this, but I, you know, I thought they just, like, why don't they just ask for Fallon tickets? Like, it's easier. <laughs> like, these were, these were, and when you say this, these are guys who are calling you saying, we have this footage and we want my, you to My see two it. producers, uh, David Dennerstein and Robert uh, Fivalent, um, they said that they had over 40 hours of this mythical Stevie Wonder Sly and the Family Stone concert that happened in Harlem. And, you know, after like nine people told me, I never heard of it. And they were like of age at the time. I just like, nah, there's no way this happened. And so, I mean, it must have been for someone like you and for the kind of artists that are in this film. I and mean, what was it like when you first sat down and started watching this footage? Was it like the Holy Grail? Uh, it, it's past the Holy Grail. Like this is what they call lightning in a bottle. And then I, like all my arrogance sort of dissipated and suddenly like, I became worried, like, why would they even trust me to tell this story, like, a first-time storyteller? So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say that I realized that I had, like, the most valuable... Va um, I'm sorry, am, am I giving my uh, a bracket away if I say the word vase? <laughs> no, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> vase. Uh, you know, I, I knew I had an important uh, artifact in my hand, so the first thing I did was... You know, assembled a, a crack team of, of experts, you know. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my producer, uh, Joseph Patel, and, and my editor, Josh. Uh, you know, and, you know, everyone else involved with the project. But um, I, I just wanted to do it because, you know, I'm an obsessive yeah. for history. And so... And it's interesting, you know, it seemed like it was not just lost in that people didn't know what happened, but it seemed like some of the people you talked to that even performed at it almost to some degree had forgotten. Because we have this great thing in the film, which is you show, we get to watch people in real time watch their old performances. Very meta. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of that, uh, that Harry Met Sally situation where he gets to reflect and watch people watch themselves. Um, I thought it was important only because uh, just in my research, I had so many goosebump moments of like, wow, 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 that sort of thing, um, that I wanted them to have the same response too. I wanted to catch their their reaction when they first saw it. And yeah, it was, it was complete, like magic constantly jumps from the screen uh, when you watch these performances. And uh, another magic thing that's happened for you 
is that some people have reached out and said they not only have seen themselves in the footage, they've seen, uh, you know, a departed uh, family members. Yeah, that, that to me is my favorite part of this whole process. Um, all throughout social media, like every day, um, there's a, a, a guy who hasn't seen or has any photos of his brother who passed away when he was like 20, like during like 1970, 71. And we have a close up of them. So like the whole family is like, you know, they get their opportunity to see their uncle uh, as a teenager. There's a woman that discovered her great grandmother uh, in the front row screaming at Stevie Wonder. Um, you know, and daily I get things of, oh, that's me when I was 14, you know. So that's, that's, really that's cool. what's happening right now, yeah. Um, you had actually seen footage of this before, but you didn't know what it was for. You were in Japan. Yeah. And where did you see it? Okay, so when the Roots first went to uh, Japan in 1997, back when things were like more localized and the internet didn't connect the world at the same time, um, if you wanted to see anything from my childhood, uh, old games, toys, artifacts, Afro picks, whatever, um, you went to Tokyo. Really? Because I mean, they, they have such an affinity for like 70s culture over there. And so um, my translator uh, looked at my Afro and was like, she kind of put two and two together. Like, you know, you remind me of Don Cornelius from Soul Train. And so I was like, okay. And then uh, she took me to a place called the Soul Train Cafe, uh, which is basically kind of like a, a Friday's <laughs> <laughs> with better fonts. Yeah. And, um, and there was like monitors all over the restaurant. And I just happened to see maybe a, a two or three minute clip of Sly and the Family Stone uh, from one of the faraway cameras. And so at the time, I didn't realize I was watching the Harlem Cultural Festival. I thought it was like Mantro Jazz Festival or something like in Europe. And you, uh, I want to uh, refer back to something you said about how you used to be YouTube. You took this very seriously. You carried around like bags full of tapes because people had this expectation yeah. that even when you traveled, they could ask you for this sort of piece of arcana that no one else could get. So I had two Kipling bags, probably the size of this couch right here. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and then once I went to the Soul Train Cafe, and you know, again, this is before the internet, before you could instantly look at, back at something from your childhood. All I had were memories at that point. And so I asked this woman, like, where can I find like these clips? You talk about Soul Train. I haven't seen that in 25 years. Like, where is it? And um, she took me to this magical like video city in Tokyo and I stayed an extra two days. Like I probably purchased easily like fifteen thousand dollars worth of that's like Vaz, getting it, that's Vaz money. Yeah, Vaz <laughs> money. Yeah, getting getting it back into the States was a little bit weird. But every from nineteen ninety seven to about two thousand four, if you saw me in the streets of New York, I didn't have a backpack on. I had two giant Kipling cases that I took with me everywhere. And this is what like when I worked on like Erica Badu's record or D'Angelo's record or Common's album or any artist I work with, we'd spend five hours just going through what we call like the treats. And that's how we made like the records that I'm sort of associated with and known for. Like it's just based on that. And then YouTube came and put me out of business. <laughs> so you, uh, you also mentioned going to Japan uh, for festivals. Obviously this is a you know, it's a film about a festival. Yeah. And uh, The Roots were a festival act for the Roots a long Picnic. time. Yeah. And what was it that drew you guys to festivals? Were you just, uh, you know, were you building a fan base? Like, did, is that what the festivals helped you do? So the, the, the whole goal of festivals, especially when you're a new act going to Europe, you want to do the summer circuit. It's, it's fishing. And so, at, at, like, back in 92, if we're playing, like, uh, Reading Festival or, or Glastonbury, uh, behind a, you know, they're waiting for Jamiroquai to come on and let the Roots do their 45 minutes. Um, you want to make an impression. So our whole goal was always like to lease, okay, there's 40,000 people out there, but we just need 5,000 people. And then you come back in December, and when you play clubs and theaters, those people that saw you at festivals, they're your new fans. That's, uh, and, and what a cool thing to have, uh, to have gone through and done. And this is really, uh, congrats on this film. Uh, Thank you. New Yorker has already called the best movie of the year. I mean, you couldn't have expected, right? I, you know, this was this was my 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 pivot in pandemic uh, sort of thing that just kept me sane, you know, yeah. <laughs> while we were waiting for what was happening. But I didn't realize that what was my passion project would would even resonate with the world like this. So I'm I'm very excited. Uh, well, it's really special. I can't Thank recommend you. it enough to everybody. Thanks so much for being here, my friends. Summer of Souls in theaters and on Hulu now. We'll